We're going to switch gears now and we're going to start talking soon about probability. But before we talk about probability, we want to talk about the calculating the number of ways that something can happen. And so in this video, we're going to take a look at counting rules. The product rule occurs when we have a procedure that can be broken into a sequence of tasks where the number of outcomes of each task or ways that you can perform each task is expressed as n1, n2, n3, etc. Then there are n1 times n2 times n3, etc. times nk different ways to perform the procedure. So that's just fancy math talk for saying, hey, if you've got something that can be performed a bunch of different ways, then multiply those ways. So for instance, let's say I'm getting dressed and I'm gonna wear shorts and a t-shirt. If I have four different t-shirts and I have three different pair of shorts, how many different outfits do I have? So I can just use the product rule to say four times three equals 12 different outfits. In the last question, we were asked to find the number of outfits that you could create with four t-shirts and three different pair of shorts. If instead you were asked to find what those different outfits were, then we might use a strategy called a tree diagram. And a tree diagram is just a visual representation. It's going to help us see what those outcomes are. Now, tree diagrams are most helpful when you would use the product rule. So when you have different outcomes that you would multiply to find the number of options, or once we talk about probability, the probability of those options. But let's get started on this one. Notice I am going to make four branches because I have four different t-shirts. So I'm just gonna call this t-shirt one t-shirt 2, t-shirt 3, and t-shirt 4. And then off of each of those, I am going to make three branches because there are three options for the next one. And so here I would write uh, shorts 1, shorts 2, shorts 3. And I would do that for each of these. And again, it's not super helpful in this question because I gave us sort of an easy question to look at. But the very important last step that a lot of students forget to do is to look at what the total outcomes are. So when I'm writing what the outcome is, essentially I'm following the branch. So I would follow the branch to T1, and then from there follow the branch to S1. So this one is T-shirt one, shorts one. And then I could do T-shirt one, shorts two and t-shirt one, shorts three, and I could continue that all the way down the list. Now what's going to be important here is we have already determined that four times three is 12, and there are 12 different options. And if I were to list all of these, there would also be 12 different outfits that I could wear. The sum rule is if I have a task that can be performed in one of n1 ways or one of n2 ways, and so or is our keyword here with the sum rule, then there are n plus one plus, sorry, n1 plus n2 ways to perform the task. So for instance, I always, always want to take a trip to the beach, but let's say I can either travel to one of 37 international beaches or one of 14 domestic beaches. How many beach? vacation choices do I have? So all this is saying is if I can take 37 international or I could take 14 domestic, then there are a total of 51 beach choice vacations that I have. Now notice I've written the sum rule out um, symbolically for you above. And that's just saying if I can perform the task and these lines on the side that looks like absolute value, that's just the cardinality. It's saying how many are inside that union. And so this is saying, if I've got some choice of A1 or a choice of A2 or a choice of in A3, etc., then all I have to do is add the number of each of those choices to find the total number of choices. Now we have the subtraction rule, 
and quite often you will see this called the principle of inclusion exclusion and we'll talk more in detail in this course and then we'll talk in way more detail if you continue on to combinatorics but the subtraction rule basically says if a task can be done in either one of n1 ways or one of n2 ways then the total number of ways to do the task is n1 plus n2 minus the number of ways that are common to the two different ways so essentially if you've taken any sort of statistics class, this is the rule that says, hey, if there's something here in the middle where those values are not disjoint, so there is an overlap of the number of ways in each set, then we have to subtract what's in the overlap because essentially it was counted in the first set and in the second set. So for instance, how many bit strengths bit strings of length 7 either start with 1 bit or end with 3 bits 0 0 0. So if I have the number that start with 1, so I'm setting this value to be 1, and then all of these is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 different values that can either be 0 or 1. So that should be 2 to the 6th because there's two options here, two here, two here, two here, two here, and two here. Remember, because a bit string is going to have values of zero or one. Now, let's find the number that end with zero, zero, zero. So I'm setting this to be zero, setting this to be zero, and setting this to be zero. And then again, I've got any value that I want of the two, zero or one, so this could be one of two choices times one of two choices times one of two choices times one of two choices. I should have put multiplication up there as well. And again, that's two to the fourth. So two to the fourth that end with zero, zero, zero. And now, so I've basically found this value and now I'm going to, and I've already found this value. I need to find the overlap, the ones I counted both here and here. So now I'm going to set the first value as one, the last three values as zeros, and these values can be anything I want them to be, so that's two times two times two, or two to the third. So my solution would be two to the sixth plus two to the fourth minus two to the third. Now, of course, I could go through and determine that answer, which is not going to be very difficult, because 2 to the 6th is 64, 2 to the 4th is 16, 2 to the 3rd is 8, so if I add 64 and 16, I get 80, 80 minus 8 is 72. So there's 72 different ways. Again, because there were eight that I counted in both the numbers that start with one and that end with zero, zero, zero. The last rule I would like to go over is the division rule. And the division rule essentially says there are n divided by d ways to do a task if it can be done using a procedure that can be carried out in n ways and there are d corresponding outcomes per group. So that seems a little bit sketchy and maybe hard to understand. So let's take a look at an example and hopefully help us to understand. So I have a circular table and I'm going to split this table into six positions. And I'm just going to arbitrarily call this position one, two, three, four, five, and six. So it says, how many ways can I sit eight people, I'm sorry, six people around a circular table where two seatings are considered the same when each person has the same left and right neighbor? So if I were just going to determine the number and it was not considered the same when the person had the same left and right hand neighbor, I could very easily do this by saying there are six options for position one because there are six people. Once I've sat one person in position one, there are five people left for position two, and four for position three, and three, and two, and one. And so six times four times, six times five times four times three times two times one, or six factorial would be the total number of ways. 
Well, that's all well and good, but here's the problem. I'm going to erase my numbers here. Oh, and my circle, apparently. So let's say person A sat at position one, and then B, C, D, E, and F. So Adam and Bob and Kurt and Doug and Eric and Frank. We get the idea. What the what this is saying is let's say instead Adam sat here and Bob sat here and I don't remember the names that I made up so we'll just you know stick with my lettering system so I have a b c d e f notice all I did was I took everyone and rotated them clockwise one position and so these two seatings are considered the same and again, if I shifted one more and said, here's A and here's B and here's C and here's D and here's E and here's F. And so we get the idea that what's going to happen is I'm going to end up with six that are all the same because if A started at position one, or at two, or at three, or at four, or at five, or at six, and I kept everyone in the same position, all of those are considered the same. So this result is six factorial divided by six, again, six because there are six different positions that are actually the same seating. So still the same order of A, B, C, D, E, F, just rotated one position, two positions, three positions, four positions, five positions, or six positions. Coming up next, we're going to take a look at permutations and combinations.